Hey, welcome to Robert's Models. This is part two of Let's Paint Flash Gets. Today we're going over the SNAS gun. We're going to start by base coating the casing of the SNAS gun with Mephiston Red. Pro tip, if you don't glue on the outer casing part of this gun, you can do this without getting any red paint on the rest of the model or using any masking. Next we're going to use Evil Sun Scarlet for a zenithal highlight. Now we're going to do our last highlight with Fire Dragon Bright. If you make any mistakes or you need to tidy anything up in the future, you can repeat this same process with a brush just using glazes instead of an airbrush. Here we go, I have painted all of the black and metal parts with a bad and black. And now I'm going to go and edge highlight all of the red areas with Cadian Flesh Tone. Now I'm going to do a final edge highlight with Pallid Witch Flesh, just hitting up the corners anywhere where two or more edges meet, and also doing a few little stippling movements to create uh, nicks and dings in the paint job where the light will be reflecting. Next I'm going to base coat all of the black areas with VMA Dark Grey Blue, just to get it to be off black. I'm going to edge highlight all of those black areas with Fenrisian Grey, And now our last edge highlight is with Ultra and Grey. Again, just hitting up the corners anywhere two edges meet and adding little nicks and dings randomly along those edges. This is pretty much my go-to method for painting black on any hard surface or any shiny surface. So I use the same technique on the black leather on the captain and on the glove on the arm you, you can see here. I also use this method when painting the little knobs and dials on the snaz gun. Now I'm going to base coat all of the metal areas with VMA Gun Grey. And now I'm going to wash all of the black areas and the metal areas with Non Oil. Just try not to get it on any of the red areas. Now it's on to weathering. We're going to use some VMA Burnt Umber and a piece of old sponge and you basically just dip the sponge in the paint, wipe off most of the paint like dry brushing onto a piece of tissue and then you start dabbing the sponge over the edges of your model. We're going to use this on the metal areas to create a rust effect and we can also use this on the painted areas to make it look like the paint has chipped off leaving a layer of primer underneath or maybe just also rust. Next up we're doing the same thing with Scrag Brown, not putting quite as much on but trying to make sure it gets into some deeper areas because this is the newer rust that will have formed and won't have been knocked off yet. The trick with rust is using more than one colour. On models of this scale I use two colours, on vehicles I usually use six or seven. So now I'm going to use VMA Chrome. This represents the areas where the rust has been knocked off through repeated use or from damage. So we're going to hit up the handlebars with that, edges of the barrel, bottom of the bipod, that kind of area. Now 
Now I'm going to paint any white areas with celestial grey. If you wanted the white to be weathered, then you should do this step before you do the weathering and then do all of the weathering together. I wanted these rockets to be nice and clean because once you fire a rocket, you're not getting it back. So this will take two to three coats to cover over the black. Now I'm going to highlight that celestial grey with some Ulthran grey. As this is a curved surface, I'm just blocking in the highlights on along the tops of the rockets. And then I'll use a glazes to create a gradient from the celestial grey to the Ulthran grey on the top, just to reinforce that round shape. Now I'm using some thin Dabadan black to black line those rockets. You could use a mid grey if you wanted it to be less harsh. I'm also using the Abaddon black to paint the strap or clip. I'm not sure what that bit's called. And I'll paint that up and highlight it the same as the rest of the black before the weathering. Now we're just painting the warheads with Evil Sun Scarlet. Next up is the leather areas. We're going to base coat these with VMA Burnt Umber. On most of the SNAS guns, it's just going to be the handle area. I'm going to do a first highlight with Doom Bull Brown, again just blocking in the highlight along the top of the handle and then creating a gradient up from the sides to reinforce the curved shape of that surface. Now we're going to start highlighting and creating scratches with a Shabti Bone. You don't have to be too neat on this first pass because this is all the damaged areas, so this is technically part of the weathering of the leather, making it look old. Now we're going to use some Burnt Umber. It's a nice thin paint, so you don't need to thin this down normally because it's an airbrush paint. Now we're just going to use that to tint what we've done so far back to that Burnt Umber colour. It makes it look like the scratches have been trapped under the wax. Now we're using a Shabti Bone. This is our final highlight on the leather areas. Also reinforcing some of the deeper scratches with this. The copper areas are painted with metal colour copper. I use this on any worky bits or gubbins. I also use this for all of the shell casings. And we're going to shade that with Agrax Earthshade Gloss. Now this is how I paint the plasma coil effect, or the, the bright blue light effect that you can see on the lamp I've already painted there. You base coat with Celestra Grey, this will take two coats normally to cover over here. You don't need to have too strong of a base coat on here because we're going to cover it up with Ultraman Grey afterwards. Now we're going to paint in some Gullum and Blue Glaze, but we're using it like a wash here. We want it to run into all of our recesses, so you want to use quite a lot. I'm using it straight from the pot here, not thinning it down at all. If you apply too much, you can use a second brush to just wick away the excess. 
Make sure you let the model dry in the correct orientation so that it, gravity helps keep the glaze where you want it. Now we're going to use Ultron Grey to highlight the coils. And this is just to reinforce the bright glowing effect rather than it actually being a highlight, but it's the same techniques as a highlight. final step is to add a little edge highlight that's coming from this particular light source rather than our global light source that we're using for the rest of our edge highlights. That's it, there's a couple more bits I'll go over. The laser sights that are on some of the guns, that's just Mephiston Red, then Evil Sun Scarlet, then Fire Dragon Bright, just done in that order, starting from the outside to the inside. Uh, the cables are usually painted in Evil Sun Scarlet. That's about it. Any yellow areas use the yellow recipe from the Captain video. Uh, if you want the recipe for painting the skin that was visible in there, you can get that in the Captain video, which will be linked at the end of this video and in the doobly-doo below. If you are enjoying this series, then please like, share and subscribe and leave a comment letting me know what you want to see in the future. There are links in the doobly-doo to all of the equipment I use, as well as to my Facebook page, Twitter and Instagram. And if this video helped you paint any of your orcs, then please tweet me some pictures, I'd love to see them. That's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.